Okay, so we are now live streaming. Uh, Reeve Emo is just coming in, so we can uh, commence as soon as uh, Reeve Emo gets settled. There we go. Okay. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'll ask for the calling of the roll, please. Thank you, Mayor Edie. Um, Mayor Edie. Present. Reeve Eman. Present. Councillor Coolis. Present. Councillor Evans. Present. Councillor Hines. Councillor Jamison. Present. Councillor Sidney. Present. We have a quorum, Mayor Edie. Thank you. Is there any declaration of paternity interest on the general nature thereof? Okay, hearing none. It's good. Okay. okay. First motion the Brad Gould, owner of Finney Road House, be heard before council to present information concerning liability insurance for restaurant patios. Need a mover, please. Councillor Jamison, seconded by Councillor Evans. We'll now call on uh, Mr. Gould to give us a report. Hey, can, uh, can you hear us, Brad? Okay, and just give a sound yeah. check. All right, yeah. great. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Well, I, I'm not trying to be the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. I'm just, I just want to give you my numbers of what I, what I am able to give you. Um, and some other places that are and people I've talked to that I think most of us are in, in agreement that we want to see the downtown thrive and <clears throat> businesses to survive. Um, so the places that I've talked to with my insurance guy, and it's a longer list than this, but uh, Windsor, Ontario, London, Oakville, Milton, Mississauga, Brandon, Sudbury, are all $2 million. Those are a lot bigger places than we are. Um, it was said last week, um, uh, Councillor Jameson it's, said that it was the cost of doing business. Well, this is true and I understand where you guys come from. I'm not, I, I don't mean to be a thorn in anyone's side here, but it's, it's, not, it's not apples and apples. The, the cost of doing business, yes, but the cost of doing business in rent crew, if this goes through, is not the same as Armpra or any of these cities that I, you know, that have a $2 million that can make it, <clears throat> hopefully. Um, I talked to the mayor of Armpra, you know, and he is absolutely against it. And he would never let it, if what he could do to save uh, Armpra's downtown. Um, We've, we've been in business a long time. I've talked to Coco Jerry's, uh, Nick. I know that his has gone up three grand a year. So in the last two years, he's $6,000 just extra in insurance. Um, I know his numbers. I know my numbers. I know the restaurant numbers. And it is, it is not an easy game. It, it is, is the worst business to be in, quite frankly, right now. The restrictions we have with the liquor board and the, thing, the hoops and things we have to do um, to even come close to staying open for those guys is unheard of. Um, I get you want to try and cover your back and I, and I, get, I, I haven't heard what your side has said about the 5 million, but um, at the end of the day, if mine goes up 4,900, I'm, I'm not, you know, I've got a $10,000 patio sitting there built offsite, ready to be connected tomorrow morning. Um, but I, we cannot afford uh, $4,900 extra in insurance. Um, we, we go out of our way for this town and this community. Um, my father and I both, um, whether it be <clears throat> uh, so simply uh, people using our facility when they're out for a walk, you know, we are a public facility. We welcome everybody in to use the washrooms and whatnot. Um, catch the ace we were a big part of that you know i think when there's a fundraiser in this town we all know and appreciate how good the people are in this community and we are a part of that we are a big part of that um as for the front patio um we're just we're just looking to stay in the game here it's not it's not uh um you know, uh, one dollar drinks and, and open till two a.m. We, we're looking just to get our lunch and supper rush in. Um, 
hopefully, you know, people from other places can enjoy our downtown. They'll, they'll hear that we have these places available for them. I drove through Chelsea, Quebec, not a week ago, and uh, it's it's amazing what they're what they're doing. That's got no purpose here, but it's just beautiful to see downtown with patios and people that can sit outside and enjoy it. Enjoy what you've guys done. You've done an amazing job to the to the main street, and. Um, yeah, I just really hope uh, we get to put it out. I really hope we get to put it out. Um, numbers wise, <laughs> I've got four years in front of me here. Our losses last year were $24,000, our net loss. Um, COVID related, of course. Um, but these four years, there's no, we aren't getting rich by any means. We We are, you know, making ends meet and getting by like everyone else. I'm not asking for a handout or anything. I'm just saying there's the insurance goes up $4,900 a year and it's, it's just not, it's not feasible. It's not workable. That's a hundred thousand dollars in sales in, in our industry. We work on five to 8%. Um, it's just not manageable. And I would love to uh, waiting on insurance numbers and waiting for, you know, some of the paperwork, not on your guys' end, but just limbo and COVID and not knowing when to open and when we're going to open. I, I went ahead and built the patio and um, and my my insurance guy was working on numbers for me. And, and when the buck dropped, he says, this is the best I can do. Uh, we beg for insurance every year. The restaurant, the, nobody wants to insure a restaurant. You know, we have to mind our P's and Q's. Um, uh, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's a very hard business to be in and we love the town. We love the people in it and we do everything we can to help anybody uh, along the way. And, uh, I really like to have that out front and, uh, make this thing happen. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Uh, any questions or comments from uh, council members? Uh, Redeemo. Thank you, and thank you for appearing in front of us tonight, Brad. I'm curious, um, what what's the criteria for insurance? Like, you know, we think we've heard in the community that it it's a sliding scale based on size and seating, and and I'll say liters or gallonage or or units sold of of alcohol. Is that is that accurate? That's accurate. Yeah. Okay. Did Did you want me to touch on that? Well, um, your worship, it's up to you. Uh, I'm sorry, who spoke up there? Was that? Uh, it was, uh, it was Mr. John Mr. Justin. Justin, Justin. Yes. yes, yes, we'll allow, we'll allow that if council's okay with it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, how the insurance works from a liability perspective is they look at your annual uh, revenues, and that's basically your exposure. So, and it's split up into different categories. So, alcohol sales is one, and, and food and non alcohol beverage is another. So, the more alcohol sales you have, usually it's a higher higher um, premium associated with that. And generally, overall, the more volume you're doing, there's more probability of something going wrong. So that that affects the insurance rates. And from the perspective there, and well, I, I can get into the rest later, but that's how that works. If I could ask a question uh, on that uh, to Justin, uh, uh, how come big cities which would have way, way, way more liquor sales than Penningtons would ever have, can get down, get down to two million minimum. Yeah. yeah, well, and just so you're aware, and it was outlined in my conversations, is your carrier is satisfied with a two million dollar limit? Um, they are satisfied with that from an occurrence form and an aggregate form, which is the full policy term. However, as a recommendation, even to uh, establishments that that serve liquor. We always recommend a higher limit, but at the end of the day, it's their choice based on their risk risk tolerance of what, what they're comfortable with, but uh, we definitely always recommend more. And that being said, I could definitely sympathize uh, with, with Finnegan's and, and Brad because the insurance marketplace right now, it's an extremely hard market, meaning there's, there's um, less markets out there that will ensure his type of operations especially anytime there's any live music or dancing operations. So there's less options for them on the market. Uh, obviously associated with that, supply and demand, there's higher prices. So his premiums un un 
no doubt have increased uh, dramatically over the last few years. We've seen that uh, in the entire hospitality industry. And uh, there's even varying terms now. So in the past where they might do split limits, so you'd be able to get a $2 million per occurrence, that's per incident, they would uh, be okay with doing a $5 million aggregate for the policy term. That uh, because of the restrictions and the hard market, that, that's gone by the wayside with a lot of carriers as well. So it is a, a difficult situation to satisfy a higher limit. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Sidney, then read the email. Uh, just, uh, Brad, thank you again for your uh, appearing before Council. Um, just a question, have you looked into the 2 million and then the 5 million aggregate costs? Yeah. Yeah, can't, can't make that happen this year. Definitely can't make that happen this year. Uh, my guys getting anything done right now during COVID and in the insurance business and with restaurants, we, we beg every year for insurance. And uh, the best this one guy that found me insurance can do is the $4,900 a year on top. And so they, Brad, they would not do a split limit? No. No. And to be honest with you, we were seeing that more common in the insurance marketplace, and that's based on the hard market, right? So just less options out there right now, which is unfortunate to business owners, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that, that was going to, that was going to be my, my, um, my question was the, the option of the, uh, the 5 million aggregate with two separate, two separate policies or two separate riders. So that was my question. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Evans. Thank you. Uh, Justin, a question then for you, please. If it's like, I'm all about uh, free and private enterprise and Mr. Gould's uh, successful restaurant, um, if that's on their private property, well, what really does it matter now if it comes on to a town sidewalk? This is the expansion now moving on to the town sidewalk. So how does that differ? And then our own liability or exposure, how are we as a town uh, protecting the corporation from maybe undue liabilities? And that's where my biggest hang up. I don't mind if Brad carries his own $2 million and that's good for them and it works and they're good with that perhaps limited exposure or whatever. But what does that mean for the corporation if we use the sidewalk then? I'm, I'm glad you asked because that was one of my main points. So there is a different liability exposure here. Um, Brad, as a business owner of an establishment, they have completed operations. So that, that means if they, they're serving someone and then they leave the premises, they could be held liable. The town of Renfrew does not have any of that, which bodes well for the town of Renfrew. The only real liability exposure you guys have as, as a corporation of the town of Renfrew is premises liability. So anything that happens on premises, that, that's your main exposure there. And that could be hypothetically and just, and you, you never know that we're, the insurance is there to protect the unknown, right? But if someone were to get injured on your premises or hypothetically, uh, they, they deem you guys are negligent because you allowed it to encroach too close to the roadway and a car drove through and injured people or God forbid killed someone, uh, you would be potentially dragged into that lawsuit and either cost of defense would uh, be triggered as well as potential payouts, right? So, and we, we see it quite common within the insurance industry. Anytime there's an incident, at the very least, they need name every, anyone and everyone that could be associated with it. And at least the cost of defense is triggered. Okay. But, it, it, but I'm glad you I'm glad you asked that because it is a very different liability exposure. Yours would just be for the patio, which is much more limited to what the establishment is. Councillor Sedney. So Justin, then if I understand correctly, it really isn't much different than a car going over the curb and hitting somebody walking down the sidewalk. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's, yeah. But they can other, other than the fact like I was a bouncer when I was younger and yeah. um, not in Renfrew, but other than you know maybe somebody getting intoxicated and bouncing somebody's head off the sidewalk, it's not really much different than somebody walking down the sidewalk, tripping and falling and breaking their leg because we had you know an uneven walking space so that the town's liable. Like is it, yeah. is it pretty much similar? It, it could be similar in that sense. Like if someone is potentially overserved at, at the set establishment 
and they trip over a curb that's within was within the confines of the patio that is on town of Renfrew property, you would both very likely be named to the lawsuit. But where um, where I see a, a larger liability hazard, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but say they deem that you're negligent because your patio space that's on town of Renfrew property um, is the way it was set up was not conducive to a safe environment and someone drives through it or something like that. But you are correct in the, in the fact that if someone were walking down the street and that, but, but that's, that's, that's a little bit different because there's been, there's been studies done and safety studies in terms of where the sidewalks are and they're, they're deemed safe where they are now. When you start encroaching on it with different temporary structures, that's when there's a, a little bit more of a, of a liability exposure, right? A question uh, for Justin too. Uh, the town of Renfrew also, we have our own insurance. So if an incident did happen, uh, mm -hmm. it, if it would, it would maybe go to the two parties. Part of the fault blame may go to say Finnegan's if something happened, but the other part would go to the town of Renfrew insurance. So at the end, at the end of the day, that really doesn't involve, if somebody trips in the sidewalk right in front of Finnegan's, that doesn't involve Finnegan, so that involves the town of Renfrew. So at the end of the day, in my in my estimation, is uh, we have our insurance. Finnegan's has their insurance, and uh, you know, and we all know the rules out there for municipalities. Uh, no matter what we do, no matter what we do in the town of Renfrew, uh, we're taking a risk. And that's why we have pay an enormous amount of money for insurance, but we're also covering. Uh, if, if something does happen, people and uh, and we have in the past, I'm sure we will be in the future. Yeah, absolutely. All that I was just going to add to that is that I mean, where we are located with the crosswalk right there and the beautiful planters in front of the old Sears. I mean, uh, it's well protected with the oncoming traffic that way. Um, it would take a lot for somebody to come the other way and across <clears throat> curb to, to for anything crazy ha to happen that, uh, at that end of it. We're, you've protected us pretty good there. And I think we can all agree that the plans that we put forth are above and beyond, if not uh, um, structurally sound and everything that was asked of us to do. So, Yeah, I'm, I'm drawing to take care of uh, distances and all that type of thing. So that's yeah. just brought up about distance there. That's all been taken care of uh, through our uh, the, and, the town planner and the, and the drawings we've received. And and because you've done that and set that plan in place and it's been approved and deemed safe, you've done your due diligence. So if a liability claim, you were um, named to a liability claim, you could show that and and you you're, you're much less likely to be found negligent if you've done your due diligence, right? And you've sounds like that's that's taken place. Thank you, Councillor mm -hmm. Coolis. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, thanks, Brad, for uh, for clarifying the position of, uh, of Finnegan's. Um, it puts, as you can only imagine, it puts the town of Renfrew in a probably as difficult a position as you're in right now. Uh, you're trying to decide whether to spend $5,000 to maybe recoup um, 3,000 over the next uh, month and a half of summer or two months of summer uh, outside dining weather. We're trying to justify whether $5,000, million worth of coverage is, is too high. And if so, then we have two restaurants that have already covered themselves. Um, but because of your, your, as Peter Remo said, your gallonage, for lack of a better term of uh, service, your, your rates are higher, of course, than, uh, than your competitors. So it puts us both in a real tight position. Uh, what, what kind of a decision does the town of Renfrew's council make, um, to keep everybody sort of fair and, and everything fair and, and you happy and us happy. So we, we, we have a tough decision to make, and I guess you do too, obviously. You've got a patio built that you haven't been able to put out in the street. Because yeah, and I, can, I, can, 
I can attest for the other guys. I talked to Nick about it, and uh, when he goes to renew, he would be a happy camper to save that three thousand dollars a year. Um, Tim's classified as a restaurant. We're more of a pub, live music. Um, probably looking at our insurance next year. Uh, we're probably going to have to take live music off the table. Um, it, ju it just just to be able to open the doors. You know, mm -hmm. it gets harder and harder every year. So, um, but. I can definitely attest for the for Tim and Nick that they would be quite happy to renew that next year at two million dollars. Yeah, I can only imagine. Okay. Thank Any you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, and motion and uh, move and seconder. All in favor of receiving them on the reports. Harry, thank you. Uh, uh, Mary, if I could suggest, um, perhaps we could just bump up. Uh, this item ahead of the uh, the communication uh, for street closure and just deal with it now. Great minds, thank you. It's fresh in everybody's mind. What I what I'm going to do is maybe put uh, Brad and Justin just off camera for the council discussion on this and the dealing with it. You guys are pleased to listen in on council's deliberations and well, and we'll carry do, on. Do, do you mind if I mention one more point that I had, or is it too late for that? So I'm a little unfamiliar. <laughs> The order well, and the, certainly we can uh, we can have the report or the motion read and council can certainly ask Justin any more questions that they may want of uh, of him. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. So we'll stick around. Okay. okay. Again, I was uh, great mind for a second later, but I just won't ask if we can move that up. Uh, so the planner weather's report dated July the 8th, 2021 concerning sidewalk patio liability insurance be received. Further that rental town council provide direction with respect to the minimum amount of liability insurance to re be required moving forward for sidewalks, restaurants, patios on town property. So is this, I have to ask before I ask for mover and second, right? I need clarification from Kirk Wilmer. Is it at this time that we decide with this motion what the liability insurance would be or do we do it after the next motion? No, this motion is just to receive the report because it was tabled. So you're saving the report okay. and you're you're committing to providing some direction to staff. So um, the next motion can be tailored uh, and uh, reflect what council's wishes are for as far as that direction. Okay, thank you. Okay, now I need a mover, please. Councilor said me second by Councilor Coles. Any questions or comments on this motion? Councillor Jamison and then uh, Councillor Evans. Okay, my I still am not clear on the fact that I mean we just uh, it was last summer I think Treasurer Treasurer O'Reilly explained to us that if the town of Renfrew is named in a lawsuit, whether it's ten percent of the liability or whatever, the fact of the matter is that we can be held accountable for a hundred percent of the lawsuit. And I want to make sure that that we're, you know, making the right decision here. I don't want to see anybody going out of business, but I want to make sure that we're keeping the, everybody safe and we're not adding an additional burden onto the taxpayers if something were to happen. So I'm just really concerned about that. I'm hoping maybe Justin can add some more information that'll make me feel better about this. Okay, Councillor Evans. If we want to hear the reply. I, I didn't know, Justin, did you want to say something? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, give, well, yeah, sure. Given the marketplace with the insurance right now and that other municipalities are accepting it and your carrier is okay with $2 million as their minimum, I feel like if that's what you accept and, and, and a lot of other municipalities have, it would just be what I would do is I would have a due diligence action plan in place. So if, if something were to give rise to a claim, potentially then you you have almost like a one strike policy because the aggregate could be filled, right? Uh, and if you're named to a multiple lawsuits within a term with a lower aggregate limit, it, it, their insurance might not be able to fulfill that and then the burden would fall more on you, right? So potentially having an action plan in place uh, with with if you're named to a lawsuit, then the patio is, is needs to be closed down until further investigation is done or until the the, the claim is, is, is completed, right? Potentially something like that could, could satisfy both parties here. 
and, and help mitigate the liability exposure and still allow the business to operate is, is one, one suggestion that came to mind, right? Okay, uh, Director Aslan. Uh, yes, just to, uh, to answer uh, Councillor Jameson's uh, concern and maybe Justin can, can touch more on it. Uh, I think the question was more on joint and several liability and, and does it present, present uh, much of a risk uh, with the way the policies are structured that it would trigger the joint and several liability where if we were 1% responsible, then we would have to pay a higher percentage of a claim that occurred. Yeah, potentially that, that all depends on, on how the, how, who they deem negligent within a loss lawsuit. Right. So it all depends, but yes, it would, it would, in terms of the insurance limits, uh, not necessarily, it's just falls, that falls just on, on who they deem negligent within the claim. Okay. Councillor Evans. Um, it, it'll, it'll be a two part. The word aggregate. So, for instance, uh, and I'll use names of bar restaurant. When uh, restaurant A has a claim, and that's $2 million, uh, the aggregate was uh, set at $2 million. And then restaurant B, further down the street, has a claim for two, another $2 million. Um, have we exceeded our own town's aggregate or is that independent of any of those two? Yeah, your, yours, yours would be independent of. So that's just for them, right? So okay. aggregates for the policy term and occurrences for that one event. Okay, so, so hypothetically, if, if they had a $2 million occurrence and they were named to a lawsuit and there was a $2 million, just throwing round numbers out, but $2 million uh, claim where cost of defense and payout was $2 million, they would have no, if they, they had a $2 million aggregate, they would have no more insurance. So if they, another claim gave, uh, came to light and there was another $2 million payout, there would be no coverage there, right? Okay. All right. And then finally, Your Worship, uh, any, any other comments if you wanted to make, Jason, that would help enlighten us? Now would uh, be a good time. In regards to uh, what decision you make? Comments? Yeah, well, the... the the main thing is when I look at what's going on within the industry and uh, the insurance industry and the extremely hard market, I could sympathize with the business owner such as Brad. And when I look at what the minimum acceptable with your carrier is at $2 million, that is what they accept. And that's what seems to be in line with other townships. It's just at the same time, I understand you want to protect yourself and I'm going to give you advice to, to protect you as much as I can. Um, because I, I could potentially see see that that the protecting the unknown is important and, and the size and frequency of claims. I always get nervous with the lower limits, but at the same time, that seems to be the, the general minimum acceptable, right? So just keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, another question, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, we, we never seem to talk. We always seem to think that we're guilty before we're proven innocent. Uh, you know, the person that would be making the claim could be very well negligent themselves. And, uh, you know, so it's like a three party thing here to some degree. Uh, you know, like I would think most of the time that if somebody went off the road and did something uh, dramatic, well, <laughs> are they responsible? I would think they would. And they have their own insurance as well. So it doesn't mean that automatically if somebody has an accident or does something that a claim is going to be honored by any insurance company because any insurance company have seen, they'd look at the facts before they'd pay it out and they would uh, mm -hmm. go to court if they had to, I'm sure. And uh, so it's kind of a yeah. three-way street here. So I, the way I see it, if uh, Pennigans do their due diligence and built to the specs that uh, the town asked them and we supply the specs, uh, everybody's done their due diligence. Absolutely. And, and just so you're aware, the most frequent claims we see from this industry is not premises. So it wouldn't be that it's, it's the completed operation. So it's after they leave there and they always, well, often they get named to a lawsuit because they say they were overserved and an event gave rise to it after the fact, which the town of Renfrew would not be brought into an insurance liability claim such as that. So that's something to note as well. Your liability exposure here, just because they're operating on your premises in a small degree is much less than the businesses. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, read email. Thank you. Um, so I just uh, wanted to make sure I understood something. Mm -hmm. uh, you said earlier that the aggregate is 
is cumulative. So if they have a couple of incidents plus the cost of, of defending the suit. So it's not the... the no, the it would all be payout. within one blanket limit. Okay. It is all cost of, cost of defense and potential payout of a, of, a, of a liability claim. It is all that within that blanket limit. So if they have a $2 million limit, it would be, that, that's all encompassing. So, okay, and I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood that. Well, I understood that piece. So is it aggregate over a calendar year? So if there's two, two lawsuits or is it just one, one incident up to 2 million and that's it? Yeah. The aggregates for the policy term. So uh, they're renewable <laughs> July 1st to July 1st. It's within that, that calendar year, but for the policy term. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, Kirk Bomer. This is kind of a silly question, but we're always talking about two or five. How come we never talk about anything in between? <laughs> believe it or believe it or not, you can get well. Maybe not in today's marketplace, uh, the, the the hard market, especially for uh, the operations of Finnegans. But normally, you could get uh, different limits. So you'd be able to get a two million dollar per occurrence and a three, four, five, sometimes even up to twenty million dollars aggregate. Right? Depends on the industry. So. Uh, it's just right now with a very hard market for the hospitality industry. It seems to, uh, we, we usually talk in the two, two and five cents, but it is, it, it isn't just exclusive of those amounts. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All in favor of that motion. Harry. Okay. This is the one where we, uh, I guess we can set the limit. Uh, I'll read it as presented and then we can uh, discuss it. The Renfrew Town Council endorsed a commercial general liability limit of not more than $5 million per occurrence in aggregate for the restaurant conducting business operations on municipal property. A mover, please. Three beam, all seconded by Councillor Evans. Okay, discussion. Questions, comments? Uh, Councillor Evans. When we first spoke of the subject last week, I was uh, rather hesitant. I always uh, trying to protect the corporation and uh, listening to the sides of the restaurateurs and also uh, Mr. Phillips. Uh, but again, now I feel a lot more comfort in um, knowing that the liability is not really so much on the on the corporation anymore, and in the uh, it seems more so on the operation of the the restaurateurs. So I, I'd be comfortable uh, adjusting that limit to, to make their life a little bit more bearable, but understanding, of course, that now they're taking on the risk. If I'm understanding, yes. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Sidney. Um, so similar to what uh, Councillor Evans is saying, um, I think we uh, we've been educated quite well between uh, Mr. Phillips and uh, Mr. Gould. And, you know, I think if we look at it from a, you know, we, we are a, a small community and we do want to see people thrive and we want to see that happen. And, um, you know, I think if we look at it, if our insurer is happy with the 2 million, um, the unfortunate part is I wish we had done this education prior to the other two businesses getting their insurance. So hopefully they're okay, but I, 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 I'm not going to support the 5 million. <clears throat> um, I think we're in a position that, uh, you know, we need to do what's right. And, and I think if we look at the, there's not as much liability as Councillor Evans said in this situation, it's more when it's off property. Um, and I think we, I don't know if I want to say it's an obligation or a, a whatever, but to take it seriously, we've, we've educated ourselves, we've heard from everybody. Um, and I think the $2 million at this point, given this scenario of the world we're in, um, we don't want to see more empty, lots on main street um and i think they uh if it's if it's all done to specs and then it's the due diligence has been done then i think we've done our due diligence with the education piece and i think you know based on what uh, mr phillips has said i think uh, I, i'm i'm comfortable with the two million um, and i think we should go that way so um i won't support the five million dollar uh, hey, anybody else Okay, no other questions, no other comments. Hearing that we'll have to call for the vote then, please. All in, I'm sorry, Clark Palmer. If I could, um, so the motion was read as 5 million. I hear the seconder, Councillor Evans, is 
could support two million. Um, so, if the move does the mover and seconder wish to amend to two million, or do you want to vote down the five million and pass a, a new resolution? Okay, uh, just uh, that was Revimo that moved. I'm sorry, so I, I would be, I would be willing to consider a, a amending the motion, and I was going to suggest that amending the motion to two million. Okay, seconder. You in favor of that, Councillor Evan? Yeah. Okay, favor of that. So, okay, then uh, uh, I'll re reread the motion. Then we have a move in our second. Uh, we need about another move in our second, or if it's an amended uh, motion, uh, Rick Palmer. No, we don't. The original okay. mover and seconder have agreed to to the amendment. Okay. The Renfrew Count Dows will endorse a commercial general liability limit of not lower than. Two million per occurrence, an aggregate for any restaurant conducting business operations on municipal property. We have a mover, we have a seconder. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? That's been carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Phillips, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gould. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that the communication from Patrick Mills concerning a request for a road closure in conjunction with a planned air fare be received. Uh, mover, please. Councillor Evans, second by Councillor Coolis. Uh, again, any questions or comments on this? Review all. Uh, if I'm, uh, I was trying to get your attention. So um, with that, and I'm supportive of this and I think, and I like the idea uh, with the regard to that last motion, are we keeping the, um, keeping the a copy of the YouTube to the clerk for this? Because we had some assurances that we had adequate coverage. And so it'd be nice to have that record kept. I can't answer that. Uh... Not so I was directed to the clerk, sorry. Yeah, we do have a continuous, uh, I guess what you call a database of videos that are kept on YouTube under our, our agreement with them. Um, I can't assure how, you know, how secure that is as far as long-term uh, ret retention, but I'll look into it. But for the, for the, certainly for the time being, all our live streaming are kept, they're maintained and available and we'll we'll look into how we can library that in our own collection um, for like permanent if you will or semi-permanent retention and, and get maybe some policies in our retention bylaw around that okay and, and thank you so and we'll also be notifying the other ones other parties that have signed the agreement that we that we're that we're we've accepted a lower limit and thus they'll be allowed to amend their agreements I would suggest, so I don't know if uh, Director Aslan's here, but I'd suggest that, and I'm not sure how easily uh, the, the policies they entered into can be uh, adjusted, um, but I think that has to be uh, certainly offered. And how we do it is it's gonna be in the form of an agreement amendment, a minor, a minor amendment that's just done at the staffing level and, and that offer to, uh, to reduce to 2 million, I think should be made. Uh, Director Aslan. Yes, and uh, in the report, that's what we suggested, that if the limit be lowered, then we would approach the other establishments. And, uh, and just on your previous question about a record, um, there, there is correspondence in the report and as well as uh, amended correspondence from the insurance company um, that provides the assurance that $2 million is sufficient, so is the, is the minimum. Okay, so we're off to the next motion then. Yep. Sorry, Your Worship. I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. Well, that's okay. I appreciate you bringing that up because I, uh, it brings clarity to it all. Okay. So we had a, I'll, I'll reread the motion. We do have a mover and a seconder. Let's take the indication from Pat Mills concerning a request for road closure in conjunction with a planned air fair be received. A mover and a seconder. Any questions or comments on this? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Okay, this motion that Renfrew Town, Town, Town Council does not approve of the requested road closure of Argyle Street South. The Patrick Mill, but offers the closure of O'Gorman Avenue between Bridge and Argyle on July 31st and August 14th to facilitate an arts fair. 
Bring them over on this, please. If I could just, I see a little delay in people moving or second. We just threw the, this in to generate, you know, some direction discussion. I think from a staffing uh, perspective, uh, the closure of Argyle and one side of Argyle at that um, with some, you know, a residential in there and some other mixed use properties is, is very difficult. It, it's a connecting link or connecting road or arterial road and it, um, I think it adds challenges. And I think from a staffing perspective and Director Aslan can, can add in anything is it could, you know, wouldn't be supported. So we kind of threw a motion to not approve but threw out a kind of a, an alternative action, if, if you will. Okay. We had a mover in Councillor Sydney and seconded by Councillor Coolis, I believe. Uh, again, any more questions or comments on this? Uh, Reed Emo, Councillor Sydney and Councillor Evans. So the motion we passed allowed us to go ahead and close something. And what we're saying is with this motion, it's not what they requested. Is that what I understand? Uh, no, the first motion was just to receive the letter of request. Okay. okay. And so this motion is not accepting what they've requested, but providing an alternative. That's correct. Okay. Good. Councillor Sidney. I'm just wondering if uh, the uh, letter writer and the person holding this, Mr. Mills, is aware of the alternative and is okay with that? Or are we surprising him right now? Um, we're probably surprising him. Um, if this special meeting hadn't occurred, we would have been informing him that council wasn't in the position to deal with his request in a timely manner and it would have been declined. So because we had this special meeting, the timing, we just threw this on here to try to facilitate at least some direction, but there's been no time to, uh, to try to have conversation around this alternative. Okay. Councilor Evans. Appreciate it. I'm delighted actually that the, the director has taken uh, time to con, uh, consider the, uh, the applicant. I'm, I, uh, and offer obviously a suggestion that uh, is probably more, more well thought out than anything that we've quickly agreeing to. Um, again, if the director is uh, suggesting or putting forward this, um, if it's all right by the plaintiff or the, the applicant, then I, I'd, I'd be all in favor of that. Okay. Respecting the town. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Review more. Yeah, sorry. Um, my apologies for trying to get uh, trying to get a little better handle on this. Uh, maybe it's my lack of preparation, but so my impression is that the smaller building um, that's on Argyle is the site of this show, and then was wanting to use the street in front of that. And so what we're proposing is using the smaller building that he's using and directing people down the sidewalk to the to Water Street between. Uh, Stewart Street and Argyle, that little block. Is that how I'm, is that how I'm understanding this? Uh, maybe Director Aslan can help us out there. Uh, yes, and, and you, have, you actually have as much detail as we have. So there's no real plan that's been set forward, no rationale or layout for the, for the site uh, other than a request to, uh, to have Argyle Street North uh, between O'Gorman and Melcher's Heating uh, closed and um, so so you know we we can uh, certainly go back and uh, you know if we get some direction or at least uh, some acknowledgement from council that we can work with the applicant to potentially close O'Gorman and you know we've just been through a discussion about encroachment of uh, private business onto municipal right of way so so technically you know there should be insurance type requirements for activities like this if there was another organization wanting to use our municipal right-of-ways uh, certainly there would be requirements but at this uh, late stage and and uh, with the opportunity that this meeting was being held we thought we'd broach the the topic with the information that we had and uh, and maybe it's sufficient to provide direction um, to staff to uh, work with the applicant to determine exactly what the plan is and and see if um, he is able to to provide, uh, you know, some level of insurance for activities that may occur on uh, part of our street. 
Okay. Uh, Kirk Bomer, I think that would have to be a separate motion uh, to, to give direction or. Uh... Uh, depends what direction is being given. Um, so, you know, you can simply give, you know, delegate authority to staff to, okay. to sure. uh, act. But if you want, you know, if you want to take a position that Argyle well, that's a different not board. closed and a garment is a, you know, is a, is an option to work with them, then that's that's been covered. Okay. Well, let's deal with this motion and we'll talk about the other direction after. So I'll uh, read it one more time. The Renfrew Town Council does not approve the requested road closure of Regal Street South by Patrick Neal, but offers the closure of Gorman Avenue between Bridge and Argyle on July 31st, August 14th, to facilitate an arts fair. Any further discussion on this? And that would be Argyle Street North. It's been incorrectly on the motion, so that would be north. Okay. So all in favor? I'm sorry, I'll review. No, again, just for clarity. So we're not talking about, so we are talking about the section between his place and, and Casper's Axe. Is that what we're talking about closing? Well, that whole street. Okay. Okay. And so would we also, and so the negotiations might hinge on, uh, on closing a little bit of Argyle to get them from if, if he's using that smaller building because I've seen people coming in out of that so that's what I'm assuming I'm moving them around there is he moving the front is he using the front section of his uh, of his that's on Raglan Street that you know so I, I I understand I understand the motion I just wanted to be precise so um, by saying closing all of Argyle does that not allow the negotiation? Because I, I agree the staff should negotiate and try and work something out. So I'm just making sure that we're, we understand what we're saying. Yeah, and I think, you know, the request was, uh, you know, there's no detail to it. And I think it's going to take a little bit of effort to even hammer down that detail because it, it may change yeah. a couple of times. We have no idea what the flow of people or traffic uh, that they intend to. I'm not sure how this arts fair differs from the, annual arts fair that does happen in, in the municipality and that's typically at the uh, information center. Um, if this is just a, a secondary one, a second one with a, you know, different organization, there's different organizers, et cetera. So I think we can do that work with them, but timing doesn't allow it to be addressed by council beyond this date. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All in favor. Opposed. Nobody's in favor, but I didn't see all the hats go up, so I'm not sure. Did anybody abstain from voting? Anyways, that's motion's passed. Okay, thank you. Okay. This motion being the Redford Town Council being in closed session for the following matters pursuant to section 239 Municipal Act 2001. For section to two, pursuant to section 239.2e of the Municipal Act 2001, litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. More specifically, as it relates to the Renfrew Industrial Commission operation management of the Innovation Center. Pursuant to section 239.2d, Municipal Act 2001, labor relations or employee negotiations. More specifically, as it relates to bargaining unit of the town. Uh, mover, please. Councillor Sydney, seconded by Councillor Coolis. All in favor? Okay, we are now in closed session.